what I want to highlight is a few things from the unit one packet that I saw as I was going around uh, watching some of you do these were uh, these problems I saw some of you make some small mistakes and so this is what I want to highlight if you're doing a problem like number 12 I'll zoom in on it and you have to distribute this negative 3 to the x and to the 2y you get negative 3x minus 6y because that times that is that and that times that is that what some people were doing was that when they had the negative 3x and the positive 5x some people were changing the signs of those two things if these are on the same side of the equal sign well there is no equal sign over here you just put these two things together you put the 5x together with the negative 3x when you combine like terms 5x minus 3x is 2x and then we subtract 6y and I cannot put those together what I do not want to see from you is I do not want you to, to see you some people were putting plus 3x and plus 3x and that's a mistake we don't want to change the sign unless we're doing something to the opposite side. The correct answer for this is D. When you're looking at number 13, you don't change the sign between the 5y squared z minus the 2y squared z. You just put them together. You take these like terms, they have the same variables, and then 5 take away 2 is 3y squared z. The correct answer for that is B. And I'm just curious, I want to see how many of you put a uh, B for your answer. Raise your hand if I can see how many of you actually got that correct on your own. Good. Oh, it, it's fine, Ray. I know you're taking the test. But, but all of you, all of you remember, every single question you see here, there's going to be one similar to it on the test. That's why I want you to, to check and make sure you know what you're doing. When there's an equal sign though, if I'm moving something from the left side to the right side, that's when we do the opposite. That's when I add seven. When there's something that's on the same side, you just put them together. The six plus the 15, you just put it together to get to 21. We do not change the sign. The only time we change the sign is when I want to move something from one side of the equal sign to the other. And that's a big idea. That's the, the common mistake that I'm seeing from previous uh, tests and quizzes. Uh, the answer for 14a is x equals 5. For 14b is x equals negative 2. For 14c is x equals 9. Uh, of these questions, 14a through 14i, which one's the hard one? Which one do you want to go and talk about? Who had questions on these? Tony? Um, I. On I. Letter I. Let's go to I. Highlight it. Oh, it's a proportion problem. What I do for these ones is I cross multiply. I take this 4 and I times it over here, 4 times the negative 7 was negative 28. And that's actually what I get right there. And then I take this x and I multiply it to the 3 and I get 3x. And I set those two cross products equal to each other. Negative 28 equals 3x. And I want the x by itself. So what I try to do then is I divide by 3 and I divide by 3. And if it does not go in evenly, you see how it doesn't go in? 3 doesn't go into 28 evenly. I just leave that as my answer. It's a fraction. Just leave it that way. If it reduces, reduce. If it doesn't reduce, it doesn't reduce. Junior. D. This one's a little bit harder. 1 fourth x plus 1 third x equals 7 fourths. Uh, I'm a big proponent of using calculators for fractions. So I'm going to show you how I did this. Since this is an x and this is an x, 
and they're on the same side of the equal sign, I'm just going to put them together. I'm going to put 1 fourth x together with 1 third x. And uh, I use my fraction button. Here's my fraction button. 1 over 4 x plus uh, 1 over 3. <coughs> what this is going to do is this is going to find a common denominator and it's going to add those two values together, 1 fourth plus 1 third. And it's going to take and multiply this by 3 and that by 3 and this by 4 and that by 4, put them together, and then it's going to reduce. Let me see if you can see that. It says 7 over 12. And what is that? That's 7 over 12x. I can't put the x in here, but I can put the fractions in here. So here's what I get. 7 over 12x equals 7 over 4. Now, as soon as I get that, I have 7 over 12x equals 7 over 4. I need to get rid of the 7 over 12. The opposite of multiplying by 7 over 12 is dividing by 7 over 12. What I want you to remember, the opposite of, of 7 over 12 is 12 over 7. Think of that as the reciprocal. The reciprocal is the reciprocal. You're going to flip it uh, uh, upside down and multiply both sides by 12 over 7. If you multiply by 12 over 7, the 12 divided by 12 makes 1. The 7 <laughs> divided by 7 makes 1, and you're left with 1x, which is just x. But whatever you do to this side, you do to that side. And 7 fourths times 12 sevenths, I do it in my head, but let, maybe you want to do it on the calculator. I'm not sure. Let's, let's just plunge it in and see what we get. Time, 7 over 4. This is my fraction button right there with the two boxes. You press 12, then you press the down arrow to get into that box and press 7. And the calculator will do it and reduce it for you too. It's really nice. Don't be afraid to use those things. X is equal to 3. Now if you do it by hand, 4 goes into 12 three times. And that's on top. 7 goes into 7, 1 time, 1 times 3 is 3. Hoping that helps you on these things. Uh, other questions that you have in the 14 category, things you want me to highlight. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. I thought that the very last question, number 15, on the bottom of this page was somewhat difficult. Now, I have a feeling a lot of you may have gotten number 15 or wrong. The question, the answer is A. How many of you put A as your answer? Raise your hand. Okay, that's what my, that's, that adds up. That's about 25% of you, okay? Let's talk about how I got this, and so that you'll be able to do something similar on your final. Good job, good job, Ray. Okay, one half M times V squared, where K represents kinetic energy, M represents the mass and has units of kilograms. What does that mean? That means that we're measuring mass in kilograms. That's our unit right there. Kilograms times the velocity squared. Velocity has units of meters per second. So I actually have to plug in kilo kilograms and I plug in meters per second, and I have to square it. Well, what does that mean my units are going to be? That means that we're going to have a kilogram here and a meters per second squared there. So look at what I put. I put kilograms times meters per second squared. You're going to have to square the meters, and you're going to have to square the seconds. Meters per second times meters per second is meters squared over second squared with the kilograms. And the only one that matches is A, kilograms times meters squared per second squared. What this is checking to see is do you know how that the units are going to match any formulas that you plug them into? It doesn't even matter if you know what this formula is or what it represents because this is used in physics, in high level physics as a matter of fact doesn't matter that. What you need to know is that the units that you measure it in, you plug it in, 
uh, it should uh, mathematically come out correct when you plug in those units. Back side of unit one. 16 through 20, let me zoom out a little bit. I want to highlight number 16 because there's a couple of these on your test. And I always get asked questions about it uh, when we get to the final. If there's a mistake, a lot of people do not know whether to pick the top one or the bottom one or which step it is. So here's what I always say. If I can go 5x minus, or you multiply the 5 times 2 is 10, minus 4 equals 2x plus 6. If you agree with this step, you are not going to pick B. And then if I put negative 10 together with negative 4, and if you think that's negative 6, well, that's not correct. Negative 10 plus negative 4 is negative 14. It should not be negative 6. And over here, uh, 6 minus 11 does not make 17. There's a mistake right here, and there's a mistake right here. So students will always ask me, well, do I pick this one or do I pick this one? Where's the mistake at? Is the mistake up here? Have they messed up yet? No, well, it's in between. Well, this has the first incorrect piece to it, so that's why I'm picking letter C. I'm picking letter C because there's no mistake up in step one. There is a mistake from step one to step two. The error is in step two. I hope that makes sense to you. And then it, we're supposed to solve what the correct answer is supposed to be. The correct answer is supposed to be three. Uh, I don't know if we go that far on the final. What we do is we do a lot of these things on the final. Okay? Any questions about that? Okay. Find the unit rate of miles per gallon. If you forgot what unit rate means, it's how many parts per one. How many parts? If I go 220 miles per <coughs> five gallons, how many miles per gallon are you getting? This is the best way, literally, when you get your own car someday. Someday, if you want to know how good of gas mileage your car or truck gets, this is how you do it. There's this thing called a trip meter on your uh, car's vehicle's dash. I don't know if your parents do this, but every time I fill up my tank, I press the trip meter and I reset it to zero. And then I drive the, until my car gets close to empty, and I see how many miles I've traveled on that tank of gas. And then I go to the gas station, and I fill it up, and I find out how many gallons did I put into my little tiny car out there. And I, if I go 300 miles, and I put in 11 gallons of gas, I can find out how many miles per gallon my car is going and actually going. Not what the computer tells me, because the computer estimates things and how much is it actually getting. How many miles did you travel on five gallons? Well, how many miles per gallon did you get? You just divide. 220 divided by five is 44 miles per gallon. Okay, what else do we have? One solution, infinite solutions, uh, things like that. I feel like you guys might know how to do 18, but any questions on 18? Didn't think so? Number 19, I know I had questions on. People will ask me this all the time. Ray, did you get it? Yeah. I, I thought so. Uh, how many, let me ask this. How many of you got 900 feet per minute? Raise your hand if that's what you got. I'm seeing 40 or less percent of my class. So let's go through how to do this. If I'm in five yards per second, if that's what I'm in, I write it as a fraction. Five yards on top. Per means over second. Five yards every one second. And I just kind of, that's the very first thing I start with. Five yards per second. And I need to convert that to 
feet per minute. It does not mean we multiply by any of this stuff yet. What we need to do is I need to turn yards into feet. So what I have to do is, is I have to multiply by a conversion factor. The conversion factor is, if I want to get rid of yards, I need to go how many yards are in a feet, and if yards are on top, I need to put yards on bottom of the fraction. Meaning, yards, yards, and feet, I know that there is one yard, there is three feet in every yard. And I want yards on top and yards on bottom, so I deliberately put the yard on bottom, one yard is three feet. If I multiply, yards will cancel, and I'll be in feet per second. But I want feet per minute. So I need to get rid of the seconds. And I know how many seconds are in a minute. There are 60 seconds every minute. In order for them to cancel, seconds are on bottom down here. I need seconds on top to cancel out. So once I set this up, seconds go away, then I'll be in feet per minute. All I then have to do is multiply the tops divided by multiplying the bottoms. 5 times 60 times 3 is 900. 1 times 1 times 1 is over 1. 900 feet every minute. 900 feet every minute. Sometimes it'll be a big number. Sometimes it'll be a small number. It just depends. Okie dokie. Uh, that's unit one.